Good day. In this short video, we will discuss the accounting cycle. You will be provided with an explanation of what the cycle is and how this relates to accounting processes before we discuss each part of the accounting cycle in more depth. A cycle is a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. In life, we can find a variety of cycles around us just think about the sun rising every day, moving from east to west before setting again, and the seasons we experience every year. Can you think of more examples? When we think about financial accounting, the process followed for the recording of transactions also follow a cycle. A transaction takes place and then the details of the transaction is recorded on a source document. All the source documents are recorded in subsidiary journals before it is posted to the general ledger. The general ledger account balances are used to compile a trial balance before the financial statements are prepared. The information in the financial statements is then analyzed and used for decision-making purposes. Certain processes in the cycle takes place daily, for example the recording of transactions. Others monthly, for example, posting to the general ledger, and some annually, for example, the preparation of the financial statements. The accounting cycle can be divided into three phases, namely the input phase where transactions take place and the information is recorded on the source documents. The processing phase where the data is recorded in the subsidiary journals and processed until the trial balance is compiled and the output phase where the information is reported in the financial statements and then analyzed for decision-making purposes. The accounting cycle starts with the input phase when the first transaction for the financial period takes place. A transaction is a business event that has a monetary impact on an entity's accounting records. Each transaction must be recorded in the accounting records of the business. A transaction, for example, took place when the owner of the business deposits an amount as opening capital into the business bank account, or even if the owner contributed an asset, for example, a computer, to the business. Earning money when selling goods or delivering a service, as well as paying for expenses, are also examples of transactions. When a transaction takes place, the business will either issue a source document or receive a source document. This source document tells the story of the transaction. Some of the information that you will find on a source document is the date of the transaction, information of the client or supplier, the type of transaction, for example cash or credit, the monetary value, and information relating to the purpose of the transaction, for example, selling goods. Examples of source documents are invoices, receipts, cash slips, credit card slips, and internet banking notices of payment. The second phase of the accounting cycle entails the processing of the financial information. During this phase, the information is recorded in the accounting records of the business. Subsidiary journals are used to record the transactions taking place in a business. Transactions are grouped together by type and recorded in chronological order. Cash transactions are recorded in the Cash Receipts Journal and the Cash Payments Journal. Credit sales and purchases of inventory, on the other hand, is recorded in the sales journal and purchases journal and, if any inventory item sold or purchased on credit is returned, it is recorded in the sales returns journal and purchases returns journal. Some businesses keep cash on hand for urgent small cash purchases, for example tea and coffee for the office. Those transactions are recorded in the Petty Cash Journal. Any transaction that does not fit with the purpose of the other journals are recorded in the General Journal, for example, when an entity buys a vehicle on credit. All transactions taking place are recorded in these journals on a daily basis and 
At the end of each month, the columns of the journals are totaled and the balances are posted to the general ledger. One of the principles of accounting is that no entry can be made in the general ledger if it was not recorded in one of the subsidiary journals. An entry in the general ledger will therefore always have its origin in a subsidiary journal from where it can be traced back to a source document that provides evidence of the transaction that took place. All assets, liabilities and equity accounts are grouped together in a statement of financial position section and these accounts are sequentially numbered and referenced with the letter B preceding the numbers. All these accounts are balanced at the end of the financial year. All income and expense accounts are grouped together in the nominal account section and are also numbered sequentially. These accounts are referenced with the letter N preceding the number. These accounts are totaled at the end of the financial year and closed off to either the trading account or the profit and loss account. The balances and totals of the general ledger accounts are used to draw up the trial balance. The trial balance is a list of account balances. All debit balances are written in the debit column and all credit balances are written in the credit column. Once the trial balance has been compiled, the total of the debit column should be equal to the total of the credit column. This is because of the double entry system used to record accounting transactions. If these columns are not equal, it is an indication that an error was made during the recording process. The last phase of the accounting cycle is the output phase. In this phase, the financial information is presented to the users of the financial information in an understandable format from where it is analyzed and used for decision-making purposes. After the financial year end, the financial statements of the business is compiled. The statement of comprehensive and other income is used to determine the financial performance of the entity. Income and expenses are disclosed in this statement and the profit or loss for the financial period is calculated. The statement of changes in equity indicates the increase or decrease in owner's equity for the financial period. This statement therefore reconciles the opening balance of equity at the beginning of the financial period with the closing balance. It indicates any capital contributions made by the owner, any withdrawals done by the owner, as well as the movement due to the profit or loss made by the entity. The statement of financial position indicates the position of the entity if the entity should close its doors today. It provides a snapshot of the financial position of the business on a specific date. What is the value of the assets? How much money does the entity owe? And how much is the owner's equity? The statement of financial position is in fact nothing other than a detailed accounting equation showing that equity equals assets minus liabilities. The cash flow statement indicates all cash inflows and outflows of the business during the financial period. Lastly, the notes to the financial statements contain important information on the various items included in the financial statements. For example, the accounting policies followed and other explanatory information. The information presented in the financial statements are further analysed by the management of a business to gain insight for decision-making purposes, return on investment, return on assets, debt repayment ratios, etc. can be calculated from where management can then make strategic decisions regarding the future of the entity. The final step of the accounting cycle is decision making. During this step, management uses the financial information to evaluate accounting policies, products, income streams, suppliers and much more 
to determine whether the entity is performing as desired or whether change is needed in certain areas to improve performance. This short video briefly discussed each step in the accounting cycle, starting with the transaction taking place, the issuing of a source document, recording the transaction in the relevant subsidiary journal, posting to the general ledger, compiling the trial balance, preparing the financial statements, analyzing and interpreting the information and decision-making.